In case you missed it, here's Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. Have you ever grabbed a few squares of toilet paper and been frustrated because it didn't tear away in a neat line? No, me neither. But apparently... <laughs> It was an issue that bothered a lot of people. Charmin says they got a lot of complaints about their toilet paper not tearing cleanly along the perforation. Sounds like maybe a lot of people with OCD use their products. So uh, Charmin decided to do something about it, and they got their team to look into it. And they figured out that the uneven tear was because the line was straight, and then people pull it from different angles and directions. So they started to work on a redesign. And after more than five years, they just announced uh, they have solved the problem. Yeah, it's called smooth tear. And instead of a straight line, it's a wavy perforation. How many different types of toilet paper did they go through before they got to that, right? So that means each piece is no longer a square. So that's a big change. It definitely. Uh, I guess you're no longer asking if you can spare a square. Mm-hmm. Well, the Smooth Tear is make, going to make its debut later this month with their Ultra Soft Charmin Rolls. Unclear if they're going to make the changes to other varieties or if maybe other brands are going to follow suit. I wonder if it's because isn't Charmin the toilet paper that's got like baby powder on it and I think some cotton and also like little bits of other fluffy stuff. Like seven ply, <laughs> bits of lotion. First, you know, when you go out to like a public washroom and it's like, Ooh, this is like dandelion fluff. <laughs> single ply. I can see through this, right? You blow on it. It's like, oh, it just blows away. We had some single ply here in the office for a while because I think they just ordered toilet paper and just picked whatever and a single ply showed up and it was like, what is this? Like you could read the newspaper through it if you put it across over it. Uh, so the thing is with that kind of paper and you're out, you know, we've all been there, different public events especially, they get that stuff. You're just wadding it on your hand and you're winding around and around and around. So what's the point? You're not really saving. But then again, you go the other way with this Charmin that's like 18 ply and then it doesn't work out, right? I'm just happy that there's any there. Don't even talk to me about putting the roll on frontwards, backwards. Just If you've got kids at home, you're just happy that there's toilet paper near the toilet when you've gone. Yum, science. <laughs> Not rocket science. Check it out. I blinded us with science. Don't you me with science. We've got a couple of cat stories. A study found that purring happens on autopilot. Experts used to think a cat's brain had to constantly send signals to keep them purring, but the study has found that once they start, they just keep going until they decide to stop. It's like a little motor that just keeps going along. Keeps on running and running, especially maybe if you're, you know, giving them little pats on the head and they just mm -hmm. keep purring. A separate study found cats actually glow in the dark. They looked at 125 different mammals who have fluorescent properties that glow under UV lights. Cats are one of them, but some other animals include zebras, armadillos, wombats, and polar bears. So they all kind of glow to some degree. Well, a cat's eyes in the dark certainly get that glow. Mm -hmm. In food news, a study found cannibalism was a common ritual at funerals in Europe 15,000 years ago. Early humans would eat their friends and relatives when they died, but not because they needed to. It was a part of their culture. I wonder if it was considered like you were sort of taking them on with you in your life, if you ate a piece of them or something. Just so we're clear, uh, I'm pretty bony, so I don't know <laughs> that I'd be good eating. Okay, note to self. Don't eat Dave when he dies. But what if we're out in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> What if, what if our plane crashes? If circumstance dictate, then yes. And less gross food news. Uh, a new study found that being vegetarian might be in your DNA. Apparently, some people are just genetically predisposed to find being a vegetarian easy and enjoyable. Maybe it's just the way your system's wired a bit more too, right? To accept various proteins. Mm -hmm. In climate news, Earth just had its hottest June, July, and August on record. And I know there's climate deniers that don't want to hear about that. It now looks like we've also had the hottest September ever, and 2023 is on track to be the hottest year that we've ever seen since they've been keeping records. You know what? Someone I know right now is in Italy on vacation, and it's been like 32 degrees there. It's October. They're mm -hmm. like, this This is not supposed to be this hot in October. Yeah, into the 40s with humidity. Mm -hmm. They said normally that's like August weather. They, they booked it in October thinking it'd be cooler. Not so much. <laughs> Apparently not. Hey, a new study found cutting cal calories might actually help to slow down the progression of gum disease. So researchers in London looked at a bunch of studies that were done on humans and animals, thinking that it 
might make a difference. And they found that cutting calories actually lowers the amount of inflammation in your gums and your whole body. So that's why it helps. And they say it can even work short term. So if you go on a diet, you might end up with a slimmer waistline and healthier gums. Just make sure you don't go overboard. You still need to eat, though. Mm -hmm. And if you end up malnourished, that can actually cause gum disease. So it's a fine line. All right. So there's things we need to be washing on ourselves. We're not washing enough. Here's a dermatologist with a warning about three places on the body that you probably just don't wash enough. Behind your ear. If you like this behind your ear and you notice an odor to it or you feel something, you should be washing it more. This is also a super common area to get flaking and build up like dandruff. Also not washing your belly button enough. This is a super common area to collect sweat, debris, dirt, build up. In fact, if you're not cleaning it enough, I'll have so much debris and dirt in there that you can develop a navel stone. Finally, you're definitely not cleaning your fingernails enough. Showering, you really need to get under those nails with a scrub brush to get rid of the dirt, debris, and build up. If you keep getting bacterial infections on the skin, folliculitis, you could be a colonizer of mercy in those areas. Yeah, so probably those are the areas we don't pay enough attention to. Okay, behind the ear, belly button, and under the fingernails. Okay, note to self, next time I take a shower. The World Championship Pumpkin Way Off was on Monday near San Francisco, and the winner was a 2,749-pound pumpkin grown in Minnesota. Wow. Uh, The previous record was a pumpkin out of Italy that weighed 2,702 pounds. That was a couple years ago. So this one was 47 pounds heavier. Here's the owner of the pumpkin. His name is Travis talking about it. This thing's not going to weigh on a four by four scale. I said it needs something bigger. I mean, the thing's seven foot five long by six foot seven. But yeah, they had to buy a new scale for it. This thing's been surprising. This thing's named Michael Jordan because it's 23 and the greatest basketball player of all time. So the only thing we got to figure out is it the greatest pumpkin of all times. Two, seven, four, nine. That's a world record. World record. So the grower, he's a 43-year-old. His name is Travis. He teaches horticulture at a college near Minneapolis, and he's been growing pumpkins since he was a teenager. And he actually broke the American record last year with a 2,500-pound pumpkin. Now, you do get paid out by pound, 9 bucks a pound for the pumpkin. So uh, he sold it for just under $25,000. However, that only nets him about ten grand because he says it cost him about fifteen thousand dollars to grow. Uh, but he did get an extra thirty grand for breaking the record, so he made forty grand by growing this pumpkin. Wow! Why is it so expensive? Just all the fertilizer. And I was everything? Gonna, well, you have to probably he's probably cultivated these seeds over the years. Do you pay probably pay security? Um, to like monitor the field so people don't come in and try to sabotage you. Fertilizer, watering, mm-hmm. special hydroponics, different ways to shelter it and protect it from the elements. Yeah, I guess it would all add up after a while. Uh, so this was the 50th World Championship. First was held in 1974. Winning pumpkin was just 132 pounds. <laughs> oh, wow. They've come a long way since then. And the pumpkins that you use for jack-o'-lanterns, those are usually about 10 pounds. So to put that in perspective, that's like taking 275 jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. And it would make at least 687 pumpkin pies. It also weighs as heavy as a walrus, a hippo, or a Mazda Miata, and uh, with two actual Michael Jordans sitting inside of it. (laughs) Because he does, as you heard, uh, name it Michael Jordan because it's his favorite basketball player of all time. And it was 2023. And a new world record. What's your take on this? Some guy recently posted this and it took off online. So his name is Mario. He's a content creator. Doesn't have any kids, but he was accused of mom shaming after posting a video of a mom who he saw glued to her phone rather than watching her kid play. There's one parent, a mother, and a child at this park. The kid is just playing quietly. The mom, the entire time, is on her phone staring right down at her screen. Doesn't look up one time. Kid gets to the top of the slide and I hear, watch this. And at the top of her lungs, shrieking like a velociraptor, this mother screams one second. Kid's terrified. You can see the white of his eyes just sitting at the top of the thing like, what did I do wrong? Mom never looks up from the screen as the kid goes down and goes over by the swing set. So what's your take on that? It's a tough one for me because I grew up as a, as a Gen Xer and we went our way and our parents, not that our parents didn't support us in certain things, but just be back when the streetlights come on. We never saw our parents really much during the day other than lunch and dinner. 
and then you know afterwards obviously but yeah we weren't like taken out to the park Uh i mean i do see a lot of parents doing this now where they're looking at their phones rather than you know engaging with their kids but you also don't know their backstory maybe they've been super engaged with the kid all day and they took them to the park to give themselves the time because they needed to quickly check their email. You don't know what she's looking at. You just assume she's scrolling TikTok or Instagram because that's what you do, Mm -hmm. this Mario guy. Maybe, and because maybe she screamed because she's like getting terrible news, finding out maybe she's fired from a job or something because she's taking a week off to hang out with their child, with their kid. You don't know what they're they're seeing on their phone and what they're doing on their phone. Or she just wants a break, right? Even if they just want a break, that's totally valid too. Because, I mean, I I watch my nephews a lot and hang out with them. And I try to keep my phone away. But then, you know, sometimes, you know, they ask me questions and I'm looking stuff up or... Or they're engaged in play. So you're engaged in something. And whether or not that's looking at your phone or you're watching a program Mm -hmm. or a movie with them, but then they're off playing and then they run away. Yeah. Well, so suddenly you're on your phone. Well, and maybe she received a text message. And it was something not great. But or maybe she just want, was trying to fi- finally had a minute to respond to some text she'd gotten throughout the day. Okay, here's what's interesting about this too, though. A new study has just found out, and a pretty big study too. So they examined 100 and different uh, 60 other studies about this, and they found that yelling at your kids could have the same negative impact as physical abuse. Ooh. So they said studies on verbal abuse, researchers linked yelling to depression, substance abuse, and even other things. So overall, rates of physical and other abuse have seen a decline, but rates of emotional abuse appear to be on the rise. Yeah, because we're all stressed out, trying to figure out how we're going to make the month match the budget. When you go to the grocery store and it's four times more than it used to, or you're trying to gas up your vehicle to go to work, Mm -hmm. and suddenly you're on fumes because you're like, I gotta choose now between feeding my kids or putting gas in my car. And yeah, as a parent, Here's the other thing I'll add. After raising three and now two grandkids, it's there's days, and you know what I'm talking about, where you're like, put on your shoes, put on your shoes, put on your shoes. And the next thing you know, you're screaming like a freak, and it's they get upset, you're upset. and it's Why like, are you yelling at me? Because this is the sixth time I've asked you to put on your shoes. If you had just put on your shoes, none of us would be upset right now. So as a parent, there's so many challenges. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you might see them losing their cool. Maybe you didn't see that this was the 50th 50th time that day that the kid's been like, Mom, watch me. (laughs) Look what I can do. So as a parent, there's so many different challenges. And I would add, there's some challenges now where we're expected to be more engaged as parents than, say, how a lot of us grew up. Well, yeah, because I'm thinking... You said back in the day, your parents were like, okay, go have fun. Mm-hmm. See you later. See you in six hours. And we like, send you out the door into the yard. <laughs> riding our bikes on the edge of a very busy highway, Highway 11 in Northern Ontario. <laughs> Transport's going by us. I mean, we weren't on the gravel. We were on the road, it, you know, on the very edge, like the right, and you know, the bikes to be shaking. Our parents had no clue how close we came to almost getting run over. You're throwing sticks of dynamite into the quarry. Pretty much. Like, just be back by dinner. <laughs> Playing with lawn darts. Okay, see you later. Have fun. We're going into town. It's a different world, and, and I realize that, but there's a lot of pressure on parents, so maybe just give them a bit of a break. If you've got a Ring doorbell camera and you know the truth is out there somewhere, you could get a million dollars. Yeah, Ring is apparently offering to pay you one million if your doorbell camera catches actual footage of aliens. They're currently running a contest called the Million Dollar Search for Extraterrestrials, and you have until November 3rd to submit your videos. So it doesn't have to be high def footage of an ET, you know, like right in front of your camera saying, you know, phone home or something. Uh, Just unusual, extraordinary, or unexplainable behavior, but it has to be indisputable evidence that it's aliens. So if someone does send in some legit footage of aliens, you're not going to get a million dollars in cash right away. You'll get 50 grand a year for the next two decades. And if you fake anything using AI, you're going to be disqualified. Now, fake stuff is allowed for a different contest they're running. They're giving out $500 Amazon gift cards for the most creative submissions that don't qualify for the million dollar prize. So like if you dressed your kids or your dog up, 
as a ghost and then That's run them around the, the yard doing something dumb, you're going to be judged based on creativity and humor and could win a gift card. Yeah, as they say, costumes, props are allowed, but it has to be filmed on your ring camera. So judging this, it'll be based on creativity and humor. So that's the one where I could see a lot of people, you know, going for. But hey, if you end up catching something weird, you would be a millionaire. Well, we've got stories for you today about cats, bees, and also a rabbit otter. Starting off with one about a cat. So the winner for the most unusual pet insurance claim of the year was picked and it went to a cat that got stuck in a fold-out couch. My parents were visiting and we have a, a pull-out couch. I was like, there's one and only one rule in the house. When you're putting the couch back together, you have to make sure that Giles isn't under the couch. I come out and my stepmom is like, Some, something has happened. He got trapped under the couch. I'm basically like, we gotta take this cat to the vet. Fortunately, it wasn't too bad. He did need some stitches. He's picked up a particular phobia of like anything with a hinge on it that that is the the tale of all of that yeah that would freak you out after a while right then you get stuck inside of a couch things with hinges might scare you a little in philadelphia a beekeeper shop vac was stolen out of his truck and uh, his name is don and he said he's got some pretty bad news for the thief whoever it was that that grabbed this grabbed a shop vac that was filled with several hundred hornets and not just the workers, they had a preponderance of queens. I've joked for years that, you know, I don't need to lock my vehicle and the bees and wasps afford a certain degree of a, a, a bit of a safety net. Yeah, th this is one where of all the vacuums in all the trucks that they, they could have grabbed, they, I think they grabbed the wrong one. Yeah, you might say in this case that they've chose poorly. And how about this? A guy from Florida, well, at least he's from Florida now to the Sunshine State. I think he may have been originally from New York or New Jersey. He's recovering after being attacked by a rabid otter. His name is Joseph, and he talked about the attack. I normally go out and feed ducks in the back. Ducks, geese, ibis. Looked up, no hawk. Looked back down, and there was a brown head sticking up over the bank of the uh, pond. At first, I didn't know it was an otter, but then I realized that's an otter. My pinky is the worst. Two puncture wounds. I'm not sure if it goes right through or whatever. One is on the corner of where the cuticle was. That sounds like he's going to be okay, but there's one you wouldn't naturally expect, right? You're out there feeding some ducks and other uh, animals, and suddenly you're attacked by a rabbit otter. One of my guilty pleasures sometimes on the, the sports networks on TV, when they're not actually showing sports, is sometimes they'll put on spelling bees. Oh, the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Right. And it's like, at first, I'm like, oh, this is lame. This is boring. 45 minutes later, I'm still watching them spell <laughs> words. Uh, so that is kind of the guilty pleasure I have sometimes on TV. Yeah, you've never been so invested in the spelling abilities of 12-year-olds until it's on ESPN. Right, and I think, I can spell better than you, you little punk. And then, no, they walk circles no. around me. It's like, oh my goodness. They're so smart. good. Uh, coming up soon, next weekend at uh, St. Andrew's Church, it's a Spotlight Series. The 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee production will be on stage that you can watch on uh, the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, St. Andrew's Chatham org and i'm hearing too that it's going to be kind of a little audience participation for those shows mm. where you actually will have the chance to volunteer and come up and do some spelling so you night. might want to brush up on your spelling before you go to the show next weekend let's do that right now cheryl it's the first annual it's going to be a huge hit mike and cheryl spelling bee for 2023 so we've got three words each and we're going to see if we can spell what they're dying here mm -hmm. You want to go first? You want me to go first? It doesn't matter. I can ask you one. All right. One. You can go first. Okay. Let's see if we have any repeats. Okay. So I picked some of the like commonly misspelled words. All right. Or ones that I misspell. So my first word is definitely. 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 Right. So we're allowed. I have a pen and paper. We're allowed to. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I say we didn't clarify this ahead of time. Yeah, we're making the rules up as we go. It's fine. Definitely. D E F. Def. I N. I. T E L Y. That is correct. That is correct. Yay. You know what? I actually had a teacher in high school and he had a trick for it is to remember that the let the word finite is in the middle of definitely. Oh, okay. Well that's D E I've never even and then F I N I T E and then L Y. Okay. On the end. 
All Good right. job. You got that one right. I got one. Well, that's something. Uh, your first one, Cheryl, is et cetera. Et? Et cetera. Uh, E-T-C... E-T-E-R-A. You got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Good yes. job. Yes. yes. We're both one for one. I thought that might trip you up a little bit. I got to tell you, the one thing I love on my computer when I'm writing up news stories is the um, the spell check. It'll just yeah. tell you as you're writing whether the word is spelled wrong and it's glorious. Spell check has um, spoiled us all. Mm-hmm. Spoiled us all. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful invention. Okay. Are you ready for your second word? I'm ready. It is Marshmallow. 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 We have some of those at home right now. Delicious M- marshmallow. M A R S H M A L L O W. That is correct. Yeah, two for two for me. A lot of times people get slipped up on that and spell it M E, like mellow. Marshmallow. M-E-L-L-O. Oh, it's a mallow. It is, but it's mallow. All right, I'm feeling good now. Two for two. Here we go. All right, your new one, uh, your next one, Cheryl. You're one for one. Your next okay. na- na- next word to spell is pseudonym. Pseudonym. <laughs> Pseudonym. <laughs> Pseudonym. Oh gosh. S Y D A N U M. I could have hit the buzzer like a lot earlier than that. Pseudonym is P S E U D O N Y M. But thanks for playing. We've got some wonderful parting gifts for you. All right. Well, I you're was still thinking, not. I, what was I, tra- I was trying to think synonym. You know when words are have the same. Oh, si- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like synonym. A synonym, like cinnamon buns. Yeah, pseudonym. <laughs> now I feel like cinnamon. <laughs> no, I guess you know what. If this was the actual spelling bee, I guess I could have asked for the definition and have you use it in a sentence. Oh yeah, I'm not going to do that for you. This is not an official spelling oh. bee. Okay, you ready for your last one? I'm Mike? ready. I can win with this one. This is one. I swear, I mess up every time I'm writing a news story. Okay. Received. Oh, this is a tricky one. The I before E. I mess it up every time I write it. I before E except after C. Did you say receive or received? Received. Received. Duh. Duh. All right. R E C E I V E D. That's right. Yes, sir. I know. I always put R E C I E V E D or something in there. I don't know. I get them all. I've never felt more smart than I have in my entire life You're than right now. You're three for three, Mike. Three for three. Okay, just for you know what and you yeah, know what. Yeah, because I can't catch up. I, I messed up. I want you to spell Triskaidekaphobia, <laughs> which is, I believe, the fear of number 13. Is that the Friday the 13th? Yes. Tris? Yeah, being being Friday the 13th today. Uh, Triskaidekaphobia. Okay. T-R-I-S. Yes. D Y D I P H O B I A? Not just one of these, no. but two of these. T R I S K A I D E K. Like Trisket. Triskadecophobia. A P H O B I A. He had a great oh, effort. I spelled though. it out with a D and it looks way better. See, I picked the commonly. <laughs> Your way looks better. Yeah. My, mine looks prettier. Uh, my right. other word that I had for you was recommend. <laughs> oh, just for the heck of it here. R E C. How many C's? How many M's? Two M's, one C, right? Yep. R E C O M M E N D. Yeah, that's right. Four for Good four. Job. Thank you. Uh, this is going to be a great show coming up in a week at St. Andrews. It's the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. It's interactive. Get your tickets. St. Andrews Chatham.org. You've been listening to Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. 